Hey everyone, it's technology expert Burton Kelso here with another tech tip to help you get the most out of the technology in your life. Today we're talking about how you can extend the life of that no longer supported Macintosh, MacBook Air, MacBook Pro, and iMac. Forgot for a second. I wanted to remind everyone this doesn't cover like unsupported iPhones and other unsupported Macintosh stuff like <laughs> iPods. They don't make those anymore or they do. What am I thinking about? A little player? Eh, it doesn't matter. Anyway, Macintosh has done a job or a great job of making their products obsolete in a short matter of time. Under normal circumstances, you can get the updates for your Mac OS for devices that are probably five years old or newer. If you've got an older Macintosh product that is probably 2009 and or 2019 and older back to 2012, then it's a good possibility that your Mac works, but it just doesn't work the way that it's supposed to. And gosh darn it, you can't get those updates anymore. That's planned by Apple. Now, one of the reasons of that occurring is the fact that Apple has moved from a Intel processor like they did starting back in, I wanna say 2000, we'll say 2011. Those watching this video can correct me in the comment section. But around that time, Apple decided, or, or during that time, Apple decided that they wanted to make their computers compatible with Windows computers. Before that, Apple was using a Motorola processor uh, to run their operating system. But at some point, they wanted to lure more Windows users over, so then they began to use the Intel processor. That lasted to 2019. In 2020, Apple started making their own processors called the M-Series processor. Uh, what you saw on the screen earlier, the M1, is just the beginning of Apple's processors. But now they're up, as the recording of this video, to the M4 processor coming out supporting the Macintosh operating system. Now, one of the advantages of the M1 processor it is faster and works better with Macintosh's operating system. Intel still runs pretty darn good, but Apple on purpose makes their newer operating systems not compatible if you've got an Intel Mac. So if you've got an Intel Mac, you might as well assume that your Macintosh product is no longer supported. But what do you do? You've spent anywhere from 1500 to 3000 on this Macintosh product. You just go out and buy a new one? Well, that's what Apple would want you to do, but there are some things that you can do in order to make sure that you can live a longer life with your Macintosh product. So let's take a look at these tips, steps, whatever you want to call them, and find out what you can do to extend the life of that out of warranty, no longer supported Apple computer. So tip one would be to install a web browser other than Safari. Now the unfortunate thing about Safari is that it is tied in with the Apple operating system. And that makes it tied in to a lot of different websites across the globe. Now, in the interest of preventing cyber attacks, many web developers make sure that you have the most current version of your web browser for your operating system before you can visit said website. Now, with Safari being so closely tied to the Macintosh operating system, it is imperative that if you've got an older Mac that you upgrade to another browser other than Safari. Now to give you an example of what I'm dealing with with my Mac, I've got to pull it up on the screen here and then show you. I'm currently running, I've got two Apple products. I like how I say that. Well, I've got more, but um, I've got a Mac Mini and I've got a an MacBook Air. So to give you an example on the Mac Mini, let me show you what I've got. So I've got my, I've got Chrome open, but anyway, on my Mac mini, if we go to the Apple menu and go about this Mac, 
then you can definitely see that I am running Monterey. This Mac Mini is a late 2014, and I'm able to, as you can see, use it with no problem. Now with the 2014 Mac, one of the good things that I was gonna show you is that I can definitely, if I can find it, utilize the Safari browser. Now all of you know if I go to the Spotlight search and type in Safari, Safari will come up. So there's Safari. If I click on Safari, it'll open up. My Safari just updated on Monterey. So the good news is, is that I can still use Safari on my Mac with no problem. Same thing with my 2017 MacBook Air. But sometimes you run into an issue where if you start to browse with Safari, it will start to act wonky. So let's exit out of Safari. And then one of the browsers that I set up as my main browser is Google Chrome. And as you can see, I was downloading different operating systems other than Google Chrome. But the good thing about third-party browsers is that browsers like Firefox, Brave, there's Brave, Firefox, even, oh, I forget the name, Opera, the web browser for Macs, you can download these browsers and use them on your Macintosh computer. That way you're not tied into the Macintosh environment and you can use third-party programs in order to ensure that your Mac is going to keep running. Because in today's day and age, most of the stuff that we access is internet accessible. So as long as you're using a browser that is current, then you should be able to work with no problem. Now I will say as far as the browser situation is concerned, there is a 2015 MacBook Pro that I worked on recently, and the most up-to-date browser it could use was an older version of Chrome. So as you can see, you're in a tight box, but just because the browser is not supported doesn't always, always mean that you won't be able to surf the web. So that would be the first step to extend the life of your out-of-date, unsupported Macintosh product. Next step would be to say goodbye to Apple Mail. Now, Apple Mail is integrated into the Mac operating system, just like Windows Mail is integrated into Windows. Now on the Windows side, many people are being forced to use Microsoft Outlook as their in operating system browser. On a Macintosh, let's go back to our Mac. You can see if we get out of Chrome, that Apple Mail is still on here. But at some point, you will get a message where Apple Mail may not be supported as an operating system overall. And one of the challenges that you may run into Apple Mail too is that if you use Microsoft Exchange, you may get support. And same with iCloud. But with Google, Yahoo, AOL, or your other email provider, you may not get support at all because a lot of internet companies, especially with free email services, are no longer supporting uh, mail from third-party vendors. Let me close down mail real quick. Um, just because they just don't want to do it anymore. So you have to use a web-based email program like the web-based ver version of Yahoo or the web-based version of Google because of the simple fact that they want to eliminate spammers and they want you to be on their platform for better support. So keep that in mind. Browser is almost important for an unsupported Macintosh computer. Next, let's say your Mac's running slow. What do you do? You're probably tempted to just throw out that Mac and buy a new one, but oh my gosh, you probably don't have two grand just sitting around. So what can you do? You can actually upgrade your Mac to a solid state hard drive, which means or is the latest technology that's installed in all new computers. Now a solid state hard drive is a hard drive with no moving parts. That means when your operating system starts for your Mac, it immediately pops up because your computer knows where it is. No more searching on a round platter. I like how I'm doing that spinning motion. A uh, round platter to find out where the data is. Solid state hard drives can make any age of computer run oh, twice or three times as fast as an older computer. Now keep in mind, for most Mac products, if you're a 
I almost said a non-user, but if you're a non-tech user, that's the word I wanted to throw in there, you will understand that you will not be able to do this yourself. You'll have to find your favorite computer person to do this process for you because taking apart any Mac is very complicated and it requires someone who has some expertise taking apart computers. The other thing that you should understand moving forward with Macs is that Apple has made Macintosh products unrepairable. There is a very low repair rate or non-repair rate for Macintosh computers. Everything's in integrated onto the logic board, so it makes it harder for you to upgrade your Mac. Next tip that I have for you as far as supporting or making your Mac last longer is increase the amount of RAM in your Macintosh computers. Why? Well, I'm about to show you why you want RAM. RAM stands for Random Access Memory, and if I can pull up my Mac Mini, I'll show you. So random access memory, or the amount of programs that you have loaded in RAM while your computer's running. Your hard drive is used for storage. RAM is used for running programs. Let's get back to the Mac Mini, and I'll show you what a lack of RAM will do. Well, now it doesn't want to do it, but anyway, if we go to about this Mac again, as you can see, it's got Monterey, and it only has four gigabytes of RAM. So essentially, since I use this computer as a demo computer, I don't need that much RAM because all I do is search the web and occasionally do tech tips for non-tech people using this computer. But as you can see in this process here, there's where the lack of RAM works because it took it a little bit to pull up Uncle Google and the same thing would happen if I were to up, open up other sites like let's open up Calendar real quick and eh, it popped up pretty good. But if you were to have multiple windows open on your Mac and you don't have RAM, then it definitely would slow down the process of your Mac running multiple programs. So upgrading your RAM is inexpensive. As with updating to a solid state hard drive, you're talking maybe $100, $200 for either item, um, but that's better than paying two grand for a new Mac. Now the last one's gonna make you laugh because you're like, oh my gosh, this is ridiculous, but it's true. Consider want you to sit and consider and let's close our eyes and meditate on this because it's almost blasphemy in the world of Mac. But are you ready for this? So consider installing Windows 10 or 11, or 11 on your Macintosh product. What do you say? Oh my gosh, you gotta be kidding, right? Well, no, actually I'm not. If you are in a situation where maybe you just want to keep the computer and find good use for it, you could actually install Windows on your Macintosh computer. Doesn't matter if it's an Air or a MacBook Pro or even an iMac. You can install Windows on these Intel-based computers because they are, meaning Windows computers, are designed to run Intel-based programs like Windows. I've gotta show this again to upset everybody. Consider installing Windows 10 or 11 on your Mac. Now you're probably more realistically going to be able to install 10 on your outdated Mac. Uh, Windows 10 is reaching end of life, but if you need to find a, a need for your Mac and you still wanna use it as a viable computer, this is especially for older Macs that go back to at least 2010, 2011, 2012 that have Intel processors. So if you're looking to find a new use for that Mac and have it run like a faster computer, consider installing Windows. Why? Well, the good news about Windows is, or I should say Macs, most Macs have either an i5 or an i7 processor built into it, which means they've already got the speed. If you add a little bit RAM in those computers or you already have at least eight gigabytes of RAM, your Mac's gonna run like a charm. So maybe blasphemy, but if you're looking for usage out of that old Mac, consider installing Windows 11. That's it. So if you've got comments or questions in the comments section, leave them in the comments section below. I'd love to hear from you to find out how I can help you extend the life of that old Macintosh computer. While we're speaking of, I don't know how old Macintosh computer goes in. Oh, I know. Because if you've got people running old Macs or any old equipment, uh, be sure to comment or send this with your to your friends 
and be sure to comment, like, and share as I am hoping to help everyone who has some tech device get the most out of the technology, whether it's at home or at work. And my purpose with these videos is to help you get more from the technology you use every day. I love technology. Well, I should say open up. I want to open up a whole new world of experience of ideas and concepts using your technology. I love technology and I've read all the manuals and I'm serious about making technology fun, safe, and easy to use for everyone. So take care of yourself and do many things to make you smile and thanks for watching.